Hello and welcome to Lab 2, onboard sensors and GUI. Before we begin, I just want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. First, um, find your Wi Fi adapter that we gave you on Lab 1 and connect it to your personal computer. Okay? Then grab the 12 volt DC power supply that we also gave you and connect your Beagle Boom Blue to, uh, to power using that power supply not the USB. Then um, wait for it to boot up, find the BeagleBone SSID on your network, right? So you just wait for, wait for it to boot up and then find, find it in your network and then connect to it, okay? Remember the password for it is on the lab one. After that, we're gonna go to Google Chrome or whichever browser you use. And then we're gonna try to access Cloud9. So 192.168.8.1 port 3000. Okay. And then we're gonna try to access uh, Node Red, which is gonna be our GUI at the same address, but different port. 168.1.1880. Right? So we just want to make sure that you have access uh, to Cloud9 and Node-RED from the beginning. These these two are servers running into your BeagleBone. So in case one of them um, and it tends to be Node-RED that doesn't um, boot up correctly, if nothing is showing up when you open Node-RED when it or it takes too long, um, just reboot your Beagle mode and try it again. After you successfully logged in into Node-RED and Cloud9, we're gonna go back to Cloud9. We're gonna open a new terminal if there is not a new terminal uh, already open for you. And then we're gonna type CD home. So we're gonna change directory to home. And then we're going to ping Google. Okay. So if you have internet connection, that means you're ready to begin the lab. Okay. If you don't, if you do not have internet connection, there's a couple of things that you can do. First will be erasing all the previous Wi-Fi configurations you already created. So for that, we're going to type the following command sudo rm rf slash bar slash lib slash command slash wi fi uh, asterisk. So this is just gonna erase everything on that folder that starts with wi fi. Okay, so that's how we get rid of all the wi fi configurations. After you have typed this and hit enter, uh, I want you guys to reboot your Beagle Bone. And then follow uh, task two on lab one to reconnect to the Tamu Wi Fi. And make sure you put all your credentials correct. If you still have issues after doing this, uh, please just let us know. Now, in this lab, we're gonna be accessing the onboard sensors of the BeagleBoom Blue. The board has a bunch of sensors, including accelerometers, temperature sensor, ADCs gyroscope and others. So if you look at this picture right here, you can see that BeagleBone on top has a lot of ICs, right? And most of them are based basically for power management or control or driver for other things, such as, you know, all this GPIO, the I2Cs, all the servo motors, you know, you have to have a driver and you have a DC motor um, and you have all the power. But right here in the middle, in between the Wi-Fi card and the processor, you have all the sensor suit. And here is where you can find all the sensors that we're going to be accessing today. In addition, I want you guys to notice something. Uh, if you look at the closely, right here, you can see uh, a coordinate frame. 
So later on, when we're dealing with accelerometer or any other sensor, and you find that the outputs data on X, Y, and Z, that means that's on reference to this uh, coordinate frame right here. So the X is going, the positive Y is going to towards the USB, the positive X uh, to the side, and then C is going through the board, okay? C positive is going up, and then C negative is going down, okay? So just keep that in mind. Now, after we act, uh, learn how to access the code uh, and the sensors, we're gonna be displaying it. And for that, we're gonna be using a GUI, a graphical user interface. And the GUI will be done on Node-RED. node is that server I just asked you guys to open. And that's where we're gonna be basically coding the GUI, uh, taking care of the inputs and outputs and also how you, wanna, how you want the GUI to look. So we're gonna be reading sensor data and displaying it on a GUI, all right? For this lab, we just, you just require the MXCT300 lab kit number one that we gave you the last week, in addition to your personal computer, okay? So for task one of the pre-lab, um, I just want you guys to take a look at uh, the, the these links over here. And these links basically uh, are over how the software architecture of the scroll is shaped. And today we're going to have our first experience uh, working with a level one um, code or a script, a level two and a level three. And now task one. Okay. So in task one, we're going to be downloading um, some software, some scripts, and most of them are level one. And then it's one level two and then it's one level three. Okay, so the level ones are the ones that are the deal directly with the sensor. So they're the one getting the, in the raw data from the sensors on board of the vehicle bond. And then the level two take care of getting that raw data and pretty much making it pretty. So, you know, translating it or, or changing the units or doing something to it to make it usable. And then the level three is which are the ones that you guys will be making later on, um, will be using that data and making decisions on it. Okay, so that's the main difference between the different levels. All right, so first step is gonna turn it on your big bone and connecting it to the 12 volts DC power supply. We already did that and we also connected to Wi-Fi. Then we're gonna make a folder on our home directory named basics. So if I go to cloud nine, right? I'm gonna go here to my workspace. I'm gonna click on this little gear and I'm gonna show home in favorites. Uh, by default, it comes, it shows root and this is the file system that we don't wanna be in. So basically we're gonna hide root from our workspace and we just have home. This is where we plan to do everything, okay? So I'm just gonna open a new terminal so everybody's on the same page. So in here, I'm gonna press enter and then I'm in the, uh, I mean, I'm in the root directory by default. So I will have to go home, okay? So once at home, I can list all the folders on home. I, I can see that there is just one, it's called bin and that's fine. So we have to make a folder called basics and there is two ways to make this folder. You can use the terminal or you can use the workspace, right? So I like to do it on the terminal just because it's good practice. So I'm just gonna show you. So make directory name basics like this. And you see that a new folder was created, right? But you can also come here, right click and then make a new folder. I, I then can list and I see my new, newly made folder up here. Okay, so now the next step is to using the wget program, download the, uh, the files from the basics folder. Um, so yeah, this is what we're gonna be doing. And you can find these files on the Xcorel GitHub. Okay, so going back to my um, 
my browser. I'm gonna go to the Scuttle GitHub, which is right here. I'm gonna go to software, Python scripts, and then basics. Basics is where all the main um, scripts that we're gonna be using during the semester are located. And this is where you're gonna be finding the scripts necessary for lab two, okay? So now I found my folder on GitHub and now I will be downloading these files using the wget program, All right? So I want you guys to look up what the wget program is and how it's used in Linux. I'm just gonna show you how you uh, do it with just L1 MPU, okay? So I wanna find L1 MPU in my in the folder, and this is the script. This is what we wanna have in our Beagle mode, okay? This is the Python script. So how do we download? And um, be careful because a lot of people have done this mistake. They are copying this URL. And that's not the right we have to go to raw and then copy this url so we're going to copy this guy right here we're going to go back to our cloud nine and then we basically want that python script under our basics folder but we need first to navigate to our basics folder in our terminal by changing directory now we're going to type wget and then just paste the URL that we had copied previously. And then we just hit enter. This will automatically download that Python script into our basics folder. As you can see, it's over here. And also if I type ls, you can see it listed over here. Okay, so now I want you to download all the rest of the files and have them ready to go for the next step. Now, the next step after you have downloaded all of the, the five scripts is going back, back to Cloud9 and to a terminal. If you already have not, not have one open, then open one. And now we want to uh, execute or run the LPU code, all right? So just for your information, when we say run or execute, we do not mean this run button right here. There is um, some students that have been running the, their codes using this green button and they just not get anywhere because that button does not run the Python scripts. All right. So in order to run the Python scripts, you have to use the terminal. All right. So here, now I'm going to just clear my terminal to have a fresh start. And now I will execute the following command. Python 3 mpu.py. So I'm saying I want to use the Python 3 program to op to execute to play basically my mpu.py script. That's what we're doing. So I'm gonna type Python 3 L1 MPU. Enter. So it will tell you these errors right here. I'm just gonna stop at Control C. It's gonna tell you all this. This is all normal, so don't, don't don't get scared. This is just telling you that you have not calibrated your sensor, which is fine. We we don't care if it's calibrated. We just wanna make sure we're getting data. Well, the main loop, which is this while loop right here, is printing the magnetometer data and the accelerometer data. So make sure you read the code and understand how this is happening. Also, in your post-lab activity, I ask you not only for the magnetometer or accelerometer, I ask you for to, uh, to describe other data that the BeagleBone can request uh, can can give you, such as the gyroscope and also the temperature. So make sure you are also printing uh, on the terminal this other variable. Now, what we want you to do is to do the same that we did with mpu.py to all of the rest, the rest of the L1 programs. So mpu, adc, and bmp. So you might be required to install some libraries before executing the code. So make sure you read the code 
it might tell you to execute something in the terminal before you before you can run the code so you know make sure you read the code before you execute it now let's move on to task two in this task we're gonna show you how the three levels of software are integrated so the l1 in this case will be accessing the data from the sensors the l2 will be getting that data and saving it into a text file inside or a basics repository or folder and then the l3 will be making it happen basically putting everything together then we're going to be running uh the or level 3 telemetry pi okay so what is node node is just like a it's a graphical programming interface like labview i know you guys are familiar with labview it's like blocks right uh, and you have to it's like a, it's a flow base so you have to connect connect the, blo the blocks together to pass information among them so no lab uh, node is running in you know in as a server in your beagle book right and it, you can address it as a port um, it's port 1880 you have forgot so what are we gonna do the first step is running the l3 telemetry.py right so type in python3 telemetry.py and we're gonna be looking at some data right so we're gonna go to cloud9 gonna open telemetry over here so if we look at telemetry.py you read through the code it'll say that it's importing these libraries or programs or scripts that we have in the folder and they're just uh, renaming it as mpu and log right we're also importing this all other uh, other universal libraries as like numpy or time and then the main loop of the byte of the of the script is the following is getting um acceleration data from the mpu of uh, code okay so calls the function within the mpu and then it breaks it down into two if you look at the get axle function on the l1 mpu you'll see that it outputs data it returns data as an array of two elements so axle is actually an array of two elements such as something like this let's say one and two okay so if you read through the code you will see that the first element on that array is actually the x acceleration that's why we say x acceleration equal to axel and the zero also the first element on that array and then the and then y axel is going to be the second element on that array axel one so we're going to be printing it on the screen and then we're going to be using numpy to convert it as an array again so store just two axes in the array now then we're going to be using the l2 part of the code which is l2 log we're going to be using the node red 2 function that's a function on the l2 log script and we're passing to that function the access variable which you remember is an array and then you will if you if we go to the l2 log we check out the node red 2 function so we can do that now put it here if we check out the node red 2 function you see that the input is a variable called values uh, which is already an array of two elements so what the function does is creating two text files, text and text two. It's opening them at the following path: home, Debian, basics, a.txt, 
and v.txt. Okay, that means that once you run this function, two text files are gonna be created in your basics folder, a and b. Okay, you can continue reading that on your own. So I'm gonna just run the code right now. Python 3, L3, tap, tap is your best help, guys. I'm gonna press enter. Okay, so I start doing that. So I start printing stuff on your screen. So what does that data mean? That made the data means the uh, x axis and y axis acceleration. So if you put, if you run this again, you have to let it run for a long time actually. If you if you move your big old one around, you will see changes to that, to those numbers. Okay, so. The, the interesting part is that if you put your bigel on the side, you can see that um, the, or just the x-axis acceleration uh, of the gravity is is uh, affecting our bigel bone in our x. So this would be 9.8 or 0.7 meters per second square. So we're going to leave that going. So we run it. We verify that it's running. Here I'll show you how to make a quick float and it's actually, uh, I'm going to show you a simplified version of the, the link that's over here, uh, but I recommend this video because it's just a little bit more in detail about how to make uh, Node-RED work, okay? So we're going to have an in a timestamp, we're going to have also filing we're gonna have a chart <clears throat> so these three elements I want to explain a little bit how they work together so <clears throat> the timestamp if I open it I'll see the following um but I, I care is I want to I want to inject the data so basically I'm gonna pull the data once after point one seconds of deploying your GUI. So immediately after you deploy the GUI, this timestamp is gonna pull data from whatever, okay? And then we want it to repeat on intervals of 0.2 seconds. So we want, to, we want to pull the data five times on a second, just very quick, okay? Okay, so we click done to save it. Now we're gonna connect that link to this link. So now we move on to this part. Okay. So this is should be the path of the file that we wanna pull every 0.2 seconds. So if we go back to Cloud9, we'll see, if we stop our telemetry run code, we'll see that two text files are being are created on your basics folder. A and B. Okay. So if we go to the log code, we can. Oh, if we go to the log code, you can. If we go to the node red two function, we can see that the two text files they have the following path. So we copy that path for A, and then you also need to copy for B. So we're gonna do A first. I'm gonna put A over here. Done. And now I'm gonna connect it to this chart. I can copy paste this guy over here for B. And then I'm just gonna change this here. It's the same path, just different file name. And then link it as well and pull another chart. Now, you'll see that there is a little triangle on top of the charts. The charts are not assigned to any tab on our GUI. So that's what we need to do now. Now, for that, we're gonna go to this drop-down menu and we're gonna click dashboard. So this is, this is all the information about our dashboard, which is basically the front end of the GUI. Right, that's what we see, that's what we interact with. 
So on the layout, under tab and links, we're gonna make a new tab. And we're gonna edit that tab. And we're gonna call it lab two. Update, save it. And then we're gonna make a group inside the tab. And this group is gonna be called task two. Update. Now, I'm gonna go to the charts and I'm gonna assign it to a group. It's gonna be task two. And here you're gonna you can change the label the, the the label. So I'm gonna say this is that txt. But I want you guys to put the right label. And then this is the x axis, y axis. So on the y axis, we wanna go from negative 10 to 10. So make sure you do that in both charts. Done. And you see that the, the triangle is gone. On chart two, I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna, I'm gonna name this one DTXT. Y axis negative 10, 10, and done. Okay. Now, also, you can change the themes and everything, but I'm gonna just address that later. I'm gonna deploy, successfully deploy, and I'm gonna open my dashboard with over here. Click that, I'm gonna load. So you see, you will see hopefully, if your Cloud9, if your Cloud9 uh, telemetry is running, so I'm gonna make it run again. You will see how um, how your dashboard will be updating the information from that's pulling from the BeagleBone. So if now if I move my BeagleBone around, I'll see some data happen uh, moving. Okay. So as we discussed before, A would be or X component of acceleration. So if we have the BeagleBone pointing up, that will be you can you can see that you have it put it uh, going up on the x direction so if we go here you can see if we have it going up like that we can see that we have a positive 9.8 meters per second squared if we put it the other way you can see it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared and also B is our Y component, so we can also see that Y, um, the Y is also 9.8, and now it's negative 9.8. Okay, so going back to the lab manual, verify that the charts match your um, the gravitational force, and that's it. That will be enough for us to check you off for this lab. I want to mention as well that. If you go back to your node thread, if you go to team, you can select custom. And then here you can pretty much change all the colors of um, of your dashboard. So for example, you can do this and deploy it and you'll see how the color change. In addition, you can go to layout. Okay. And you can make a new group, a new group on the same tab. And then I can, if I assign this chart to that other group that I just, just made, you will see that it will look a little bit different. So play with this and um, have a good looking dashboard. For your post lab activity, is the, which is due before next lab, you're gonna have an individual lab report with the following introduction procedure hardware uh, software use so i want you to describe what happened what did you do um what hardware do you use what software do you use uh, and I'll, i want you to make a little summary about the software that you use and you know make a little conclusion so make sure you include screenshots i like a screenshot so keep them in your lab report in addition at the end i want you to have a list and short description of the, the Linux commands that you use during during the lab. So basically, I want you to build on it. Um, so 
start start by adding some from lab one and then just add the ones that we did on lab two so i want so this is going to be something that you, it's going to be for your help so you can refer to them you know when you're working with big also i want you to include the following information in the lab report i want you to answer all these questions okay but number five is a little a little more challenge so you will have to modify you will have to modify your l3 telemetry code to log and you need to also modify your node red to display the following information the voltage at uh, the barrel plug connection temperature pressure altitude so where do you find voltage you can find that uh, with l1 adc and temperature and this you can uh, and b you can find it with the bmp and for c you already have x and y so you need the c component okay so something i recommend go to log and read the log functions um in the, we're using the node red 2 function which is very specific for two values okay but if you use the unique function file the unique file function or the temp file function it will be very uh, easier to use and i have an example that's commented out on how to use those specific functions so you can uh, have this as a guide when you are logging the other values so i can show you at uh, l1 adc that pipe this function get dc jack is the one that gets you the voltage at the dc jack which is the one that I'm, require, I'm referring here for temperature pressure and altitude you can go to bmp.py and this one has temperature pressure and altitude okay so it's a matter of just using uh, uh importing the light the right libraries and adding up in, onto this while loop so you can log stuff and then using node red to uh to display it so you can you know make copy and paste more more blocks and just changing the path to whatever name you gave it okay so that's how we're gonna conclude lab two.